Again, this is the third video um, talking about PARS. And, uh, you know, in the last couple videos, we just went over a little introduction to PARS and we played around with their quick start code. And right now, if I, you know, refresh my PARS app, you know, every time I refresh it, so I just refreshed it there and I'll refresh it one more time, right? So I just did it twice. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to create a new post here with the same content that we've written here. So now I'll have two extra posts that are, you know, post from website, right? Let's refresh this. Yeah, now you can see I have three of these, right? So, you know, and that can happen while you're working and that's fine, you know? Um, so what I'd like to do in this example is I'd like to create a form where we can create new posts. We can type in a title and content and then upload them to the site. So, uh, you know, just to clean things up here, I have three posts all with the same title. Maybe I'll click on these two rows here and I'm going to click minus row to delete those two rows. Okay, so now I've cleaned that up. So that's pretty easy to do. And if you wanted to add more columns here, you could add another column. You know, try that out after we're done with this as an experiment, right? And see if you can add it to what we've done here. So, uh, you know, here's my, you know, the basic HTML that Parse gave us. There isn't really anything special about this. You know, it's just got, you know, an H1. Hey, you're ready to use Parse and read the documentation and a couple links. I'm going to delete all this, right? Okay. And, you know, I'm going to just leave the heading here and this paragraph there. Okay. Maybe I'll even just get rid of that paragraph. I don't even need that. Okay, and what I'd like to do now is I'd like to add a form, okay? And a form is an HTML element that has, you know, input fields and, you know, check boxes and buttons and, you know, um, you know, just basic form stuff. So if you want to input user information, it goes into the form and then the form can submit that information to the web, okay? So, uh, so here we are, there's my form. I'm going to give the form an ID, and I'll call it um, post form, and then uh, I'll add a couple input fields here. So this will be input type text, okay, and I'll give this input field an ID, and this will be post title. And then uh, I'll make another input. I'll give this one an ID. It'll be post content type text, right? There you go. And then maybe I'll make another field here. I'm wrapping these in a paragraph just so they'll they'll read nicely on the page, right? And I'll make another one that'll be input ID post submit type is submit. Okay. Actually, maybe, you know, we'll change, maybe we'll change this one from um, input, you know, type text to a text area tag. The text area, the difference here is the input field is a single line of text and the text area can be multi-line. So maybe the content should be a multi-line input, right? And then let's give this the same ID. So it'll be a post content, okay? When the input is set to type submit, it creates a submit button and clicking the submit button will submit the form, okay? Um, we're going to submit our form via JavaScript, so we don't need the other form properties. There's a, there's a few other form attributes that, that you know, configure the form for different types of input, but uh, we won't need these. We can just simplify it to just the ID name, okay? So anyway, so there's our form, and if we look at the form, and you know what I'm going to do before I do that, because I don't want to create another post here, I'm actually just going to delete... Um, Maybe I'll delete all this stuff here and we'll just write it again from scratch for practice, right? So I'm going to delete that and uh, I'll save it. And then when I go to my app here and I refresh it, you can see, hey, you're ready to use parse. And then here's my input field for the title and here's the input field for the text area and the submit button, okay? 
So remember that the, the default um, parse project came with jQuery. Okay, so jQuery has already been imported. So we're, we're going to be working with jQuery here. Okay, so I'm going to use jQuery to help me out with my JavaScript stuff. Okay, so uh, let's, let's get started, right? Let me kind of set the tabs there so it looks nice. And what I want to do is I want to listen for um, the submit action on the form, okay? So I'll use the ID name for the form here, okay, with jQuery, and then I'll say submit, okay? So when you submit the form, the function that I type here will be the function that is, you know, um, executed, okay? So essentially, like, this function is an action that will happen when the form is, is submitted. That, and the form will be submitted when you click the Submit button, okay? I'm going to include the event object here because I want to, um, I want to be able to access that. And what we're going to do is when this form is submitted, I'm going to say event prevent default. Okay, now normally when you submit a form, when you submit a form... Um, the browser loads another page or loads another document, okay? So I don't want that to happen. I want to stay in this document. In this case, what would happen is when we click the Submit button, the page would refresh. You might not notice it because, you know, it would be loading the same page, you know, right? So it would look the same when you, when you click the button, but it would refresh the page. And then that would actually refresh all of our JavaScript here too, and we don't want that to happen. So once we've loaded the page, we don't want to go to another page or, you know, refresh the, the content of the page. We just want to have JavaScript run in the background. So um, what's going to happen now is you're going to submit the form. It's going to call this function. This line here, event prevent default, is going to um, prevent the default behavior of the, um, of the form. And so the form will not be, you know, it won't refresh the page, okay? So, uh, so now that we've, we've done that, now I'm going to collect the title and the content from these two elements. So first of all, let's get the title. Actually, let's do this. Let's say var title equals, and then the title element is post title. And to get the, the, the content of the field, like what you've typed into the field, we'll use jQuery's val method. So we say you know, name, ID of the, of the element, post title, and then we say dot val, and that gives us the value of the, of the input element, which is the text that you typed into the field, okay? And we'll do the same thing with the content. So I'll say content equals post content dot val, right? And so now that we've got both of those things, we've collected the data here, now we'll create a, um, you know, a new post and save it to parse, okay? So we need to create a, a new parse object from the class where we want to save the data, and then we need to set some properties on that object and save it, okay? So for convenience, what I like to do is I like to create a variable up here that represents the class because we'll be using this a lot okay <clears throat> and we don't need to make a new one every time so I'll say var post and then I'm gonna say parse dot object extend and then in the quotation marks here this name right here needs to be exactly the name of the class that we want to save our our data to. If it if it isn't the same name, uh, our our stuff will still function, but it will create a new class over here. So if I want to save to an existing class, I have to use the same name. It's got to be spelled exactly the same. Okay, so I want to save to the post class, so I'll put this here. And now inside the submit function, we'll say um, var new post, just like we did before, equals new space post uppercase which is this name right here so we're creating a new instance of of post of the post class and now we can 
add properties to this new post object that we created. Okay, so here, here's the post class, and when we say new post, we're making an object of that class, and our object in this case is in this variable called new post, and now we can call properties of that, of that object. So I want to say set, and uh, you know I want to set the title, and in this case, title needs to be spelled exactly the, the same as it's spelled here for this column, otherwise parcel create a new column. Okay, with the spelling here. Okay, so um, I want to save to this column, so I got to make sure I have the same name. And so my title is coming from here in this variable, so I'm going to just type the, the title there. And then let's set the content. So we'll say content. Okay, and then content needs to be spelled just like this column name. And then our content will come from the variable that we have here. So I'll just type the variable name there. And so just setting the properties isn't quite enough to create a new record in the database. You know, you're going to work with your, your object here and set its properties and do things with it. And then to send it to the database, you're going to say new post or whatever the object is named, right? And then you're going to say save. So you're going to say object.save and then that will save the object. And you could stop there. Um, if you want to find out whether it was successful or not, then you're going to include an object here, and you're going to say success colon, and you'll have a function to handle that situation. And then you're going to say error colon, and you're going to define a function to handle this situation. Okay? So on a success, you know, we'll execute this function, and on an error, we'll execute this function, right? So uh, let's let's try it. So maybe just uh, for formatting here, I'll kind of add some line returns there. Oops. There we go, right? So that's my whole block of code there. And uh, maybe on a, you know, on an error, I want to console log the error message and oh yeah I gotta include the error variable here sorry about that yeah so we gotta make sure we put this error variable there right to catch the error message because it's gonna send that back to us um, it doesn't just appear out of nowhere right it's gotta come from somewhere and then over here, um, you know, if we want to do something on a success, we could put that code in here. Like maybe you want to clear the form fields or something. I'll just leave that out for now, but we'll, we'll do some stuff with this later. Um, so anyway, so we're all set. So I'll uh, go to my parse app here. Refresh the page. So, so I've got the new page here. And now refreshing it this time, if I go to the site here, you can see it's not creating a new record. But if I type into the thing and I say, uh, you know, I type in a new record here and I say um, my blog and then I type something in here like, you know, welcome to my blog, right? Oops, I just hit save by mistake there. And then I'll click submit and then that should generate a record in parse. So I'll go over here and I'll refresh Oh, look, my blog. And if I wanted to create a new one with a different title, I want to say, you know, um, parking in San Francisco. This is what I blog about, okay? Parking or is terrible. Ride your bike, okay? And then I'll submit that one. And then when I go over here, you know, I can refresh this again. Oops. And uh, now I got my parking in SF is terrible blog post. Okay, so there you go. And of course, you know, we'll want to actually read the blog posts here on the web, and maybe I'll do that in the next video. Okay. But anyway, there we go. Now you've got your social media thing started or your, you know, internet web app thing that's saving data and sharing your data and storing it on the in a database, right? And that was actually not very much work. Um, thanks for watching.